Okay, so tonight's call is about um, goal setting and the power of negative thinking. And I know we talk so much, we preach so much about not thinking negatively. <laughs> but in this case, I've read this really great book that I'm going to plug tonight, like every step of the way, because it's so good. Um, but I want to share with you the book. I want to share with you the power of negative thinking. And then I want you to start thinking about your goals for the rest of the quarter. Now that we're all, most of us are taking part in the last 90 days. So I think that this will be really good to get us thinking about goals for the last quarter, as opposed to just goals for this month. Um, so the book that I'm going to be talking a lot about tonight is called get your shit together. And I, forgive me, this call will have some language on it. <laughs> so if you have kids around, <laughs> Because the other book that this author wrote, I actually read it pretty much almost exactly one year ago. It was the very first book I read um, when my life kind of like crashed. And the first book was The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a Fuck. And it was and is one of the best books I've ever read. In fact, I've had people ask to borrow it and I've, I've turned them down because I'm afraid I won't get it back. And I made so many notes in it. And I think it's something I'll want to read again. So I'm, I'm afraid to lend it to anyone because I'm afraid I won't get it back. But it's an incredible read. So if you are looking for some PD, the life-changing magic of not giving a fuck was literally life-changing for me. And then this book I just finished last month called Get Your Shit Together. And the subtitle is How to Stop Worrying About What You Should Do So You Can Finish What You Need to Do and Start Doing What You Want to Do. Because I think so many of us say things like, well, I don't know how to do that, or I don't know where to start, or I have this idea, but it's not perfect, so I'm not going to go with it yet. And <laughs> then we're never going to start. We're never going to do the thing because we're never going to feel like it's perfect. We're never going to feel ready. We're never going to know, like none of us know what we're doing in any aspect of life. Like if you feel like you've got it going on, then please teach me your ways because when it comes to work, momhood, anything. I f sometimes feel like I don't have my shit together. Um, so this book was really, was really good in that aspect. So the power of negative thinking actually teaches you like the reverse of what we tend to focus on. It's to focus on the negative in order to find your way to the positive. So a lot of times, like Rachel Hollis says that she likes to do things when you're not taking away from yourself because like whenever we're trying to be on a health and fitness journey, we tend to focus on all the things we need to cut out of our diet or all the things we need to stop doing. And instead, what you could do is eliminate all the stuff that annoys you and think about what you are losing that's good. You know, like if you're trying to be on a health and fitness journey, then okay, Maybe you don't get to eat chocolate anymore. Think about how much money you spend on candy or junk food every month and eliminate that lack of money from your wallet. Like, think about it in that way. So turn the negative into a positive. So let me read you a little bit from the book to share with you, like, exactly what the power of negative thinking is. It says, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. a lot of people aspire to have and to do less not more. Like most of us find ourselves saying, I want to lead the simple life. Like I don't want to be running from here to here to here to here to here all week. I don't want to have all this clutter in my house. I don't want to have, you know, all this extra on my plate because te we tend to realize like more equates to stress in a lot of cases. The more we take on, the more stress we add to our lives. So it says here, which is why this anti-guru believes in the power of negative thinking. This is when instead of daydreaming about a theoretical future of being richer, thinner, or tidier, you focus on not being broke, fat, and messy in the here and now. Turns out goal setting doesn't have to be about aspiring to what you want to be so much as putting an end to what you don't want to be. And I thought that was such a mic drop. <laughs> like, we spend so much time desiring to be richer or more independent or skinnier or stronger or more, more, more. And instead, why don't we take a step back and look at ourselves and realize how much, how far we've already come, what we've given up. 
Like I'm not as tired as I used to be. I'm not living paycheck to paycheck like I used to be. I'm not going to the store and filling this void in my heart with a bunch of shit I'm bringing home in, gro in shopping bags every weekend like I used to be. Like those kinds of things. It says channeling rage at the things that annoy you is a great motivational tool for getting your shit together. And it may not necessarily be rage, but displeasure, discomfort, unhappiness. And I think this is big in the way that we talk to new clients as well. A lot of times, one of the biggest objections that people say to us is that they don't have the time or the energy to do what we're doing. Or I, recently I've had several people say to me, well, I just don't think I can handle your workouts. They're too intense. Okay. Can you handle like feeling sick and, and tired and like you can't fit down the slide with your kids? Can you handle that for the rest of your life? Or would it be better to get a little uncomfortable for a little while so that you can get, you don't have to feel that way anymore. That's the power of the negative thinking. So it says here, recognizing and wanting to eradicate that unhappy feeling was what prompts you to get your shit together. So your goal could sound something like this. I don't want to be unhappy. I don't want to be employed by someone else. I don't want to suffer through, in this case, this woman really wanted to um, move to a, a foreign country and live on the beach. And so her, one of hers was, I don't want to live through another winter. Like those are things she's, she focused on the negative so that she could find her way to the positive. So what are the things in your life that you don't want to do anymore? What are the things in your life that you don't want to pay money to, that you don't want to focus energy on that? Like think about those things. And then from there, figure out a way to make it happen by doing something positive. Um, rather than chasing those pretty aspirational butterflies that have long seemed to hover just out of reach, stomp a few unsightly cockroaches that are right there on the floor in front of you. That'll really get your blood pumping. So, okay, maybe it's been in your goal, on your goal list to be a five-star diamond for like the last three years. Well, if that's something that seems really far away to you, instead of focusing so much on that aspirational goal, how about helping two people underneath you go emerald? Think about it that way instead. Focus on the smaller steps. Squash the things that are yucky. Get the coaches that are underneath you that are inactive, active again. Squash those cockroaches rather than focusing on the butterflies and, and all that feel good inspirational stuff. So right now, I want you to, let me find her example of this. One of the things I really want you to do is get out a separate sheet of paper, or you can use that paper that I um, just shared in the, con in the chat. If you pull that up, I want you to write down five things right now that you do not like in your life right now. So for example, one for me might be, um, I do not like having to clock in and out of work every day, like for someone else. Maybe another one is, um, I don't like the way I feel after I eat a bunch of junk food. Cause that's been a thing lately. Another one is I don't like lack lacking sleep. Just take a few minutes to write down five things that you don't like about your life right now. They don't have to be even related to business or your health or anything. It can be like, maybe you don't like the color of your living room walls. I mean, seriously, if that's bugging you, then let's talk about it.
something else that um, this author did that I thought was really funny. I didn't fill it out because I didn't know if I would share this book with anybody, but um, we tend to put ourselves in these like monologues where we're like, oh, I'm a failure of a mom because I bought my kids Happy Meals tonight. No other mom. Look, that mom on Instagram is providing her children with home cooked meals and somehow she's getting her kids to eat Brussels sprouts. Like we tend to do that. And then, um, so one of the things she did is she actually like created a list of complaints that she would make about herself. And she thought about the other people in her life that also like struggle with those things. So she's late all the time. So then she thought, well, actually I have a coworker who's much more late than I am. Or if I'm late one day a week, she's late like four days out of the week. So she wrote her name down and put is chronically late. And then she wrote down so-and-so is really disorganized and -and so-and-so is in a bad relationship. So-and-so is really irresponsible with money. So-and-so puts off everything until the last minute because she's a terrible procrastinator. And it sounds horrible because you're judging people in your life, but it also helps you to realize you're not the only one who isn't perfect. There's all these other people in your life who you put on a pedestal, you admire, like you think they've got their shit together. And in reality, they all have their struggles too. Like we all have something that is, is making us imperfect. So I want you to take those five statements you've made and I want you to think about how they're impacting your life right now. And I want us to turn them into contrast statements. So if you know anything about like comparing and contrasting, the teacher in me is about to come out. Um, when you take, when you contrast, you are looking at the opposite. So for example, one of my, um, statements is I don't like my messy office. Like I literally walked in here to host this call tonight and I said to Ricky, "Ugh, my office is such a freaking mess. I hate it. I hate walking in here and seeing this messy office. So instead of saying, I don't like my messy office, I've written it down just like I asked you to do. I'm going to draw a little arrow and I'm going to say, I can do anything regardless of my environment. Because we tend to be hard on ourselves. So what we need to do is take those I can't statements or take those um, statements, those things that you don't like about your life and then draw a little arrow and I want you to turn them into affirmations. And I want these five things to be your affirmations for this week. So every morning when you do your affirmations, because hopefully you're doing those, these are going to be your affirmations. Now, if you have some that you already do, like maybe you do the Start Today journal or something, do these as well. Just say them out loud to yourself because these are things that we, we can or cannot control. Um, I don't know. Maybe you don't love your, your child's teacher or maybe you don't love your vehicle right now, but there's not really a way for you to get a new one in the next 10 days. Um, you can write that down and then turn it into an affirmation and speak that positivity into yourself you, by focusing on the negative, the thing you don't like, and turning it into a positive. So then if you look at the document that I gave you or that I made for you, it's so simple. It really, really is. But it really put things in perspective for me because one of the things she preaches throughout this book is we all say we can't get our shit together. We all say we don't have enough time in the day. We all say like we're super busy and blah, blah, blah. But we do a whole lot of stuff in a day, a whole, whole lot. And sometimes we do a whole lot of stuff that doesn't have to get done. So I want you to think about this and I'm actually going to, um, I'll share with you what I write down, but I want you to think about all the things you did today. Think, try to come up with five things that you did today that didn't absolutely have to be done today. Like I'm thinking things like, um, I made soup that didn't have to get made today. It could have been made at any other night this week because we weren't eating it today. Um, thinking about things like I 
Um, gosh, what else did I do today that was t totally pointless? I wandered down aisles that I didn't need to go down in Aldi. I took a bath. I um, cut my toenails, like that kind of stuff. Like those are things that maybe didn't absolutely have to get done today, but I spent time doing them. One of the things that we don't realize is um, that time that we spend doing the things that don't have to get done sometimes really takes away from the time that we have allotted to the things that have to be done in order for our business to grow. So take some time to real quick write down a couple things that you did today that didn't absolutely have to be done. Just five things. It'll probably be easy to come up with even more. So real quick, I um, just thought of a couple of things. I wrote down four in that little bit of time. One of the things that I did that I didn't have to do, I walked down an aisle at Aldi that I didn't need to walk down. Um, another thing that I did that I didn't absolutely have to do today was I got down, I have the kids' Christmas stuff organized into boxes and I got all the boxes out of the closet and like just went through and saw what all I have for each kid so far and then added a couple things to it that I bought yesterday and then put them all back up in the closet. That could have been done another day because they're not going to be here tomorrow either. Um, I went out to eat. Going out to eat takes a big chunk of time out of your day. Um, I bought coffee. So instead of making coffee at home, I went out and bought coffee today. So I'm sharing those things because maybe you're someone who – complains that you live paycheck to paycheck. Well then, if you went out to lunch today and you bought coffee today, those are two things that really didn't have to happen. Maybe you're someone who complains because you don't have enough time to do the things that you need to be doing. Well, going down another aisle in Aldi may have only taken me five or 10 minutes in the store, but it's five or 10 minutes that I could have been doing something more productive. So then if you look back at that document that I gave you, there, we have like, as especially those of us that are moms or that work on a, one job and we do this business, we have so much stuff to get done in one day. So one of the things we need to start doing is take, make a list, like a running list of all the stuff that has to happen, maybe around the house or just like in life. So for me on an, any typical day, I need to pack lunches. I need to check folders for homework. I need to clean the kitchen, make dinner, get the kids teeth brushed. Like there's just so many things, right, that we need to do. Well, then you think about it. There's a ton of stuff that has to happen around the house. Like I've got stuff, this room needs to get organized. I've got like laundry in laundry baskets that's sitting folded that's clean that needs to get put away. There's, I mean, the list could go on forever. But then there's things that, Yes, they need to get done eventually. And then there's things that have to get do done with a little more urgency. So if you look at that list that I gave you, I gave you space to write down all the shit you've got to get done. And then I broke it down a little bit. So you've got the, all this shit you've got to get done, break it down even more to the things that you need to get done in order of urgency. So maybe everything that needs to get done is important. So it all goes on your list in order of urgency, but something for me anyway, like putting the clean laundry away is going to be at the bottom of the list because at the top of the list is going to be packing lunches, um, checking homework folders, reading books to my kids at bedtime. Like those things are much more urgent and important to me than making sure the clean laundry is put away. 
as long as there's clean laundry, I'm happy. Then you need to focus on three to five things that absolutely have to get done. So you've got this list of things that need to get done. Then you put your list in order of urgency. Then you've got your list of shit that absolutely must get done today. Because in reality, there are things that don't need to happen today. They might need to happen this month or this week or this weekend, but they don't have to happen in these 24 hours that you have. Because we have, I've heard it from so many people. I just don't have time on Sunday nights to be on the team call because that's my family time. Well, what did you do all day that you couldn't give up 30 minutes to be on the team call? How come these 30 minutes need to be family time? The rest of the day wasn't family time or was it not quality family time? Is the stuff that you did during the day less important than this call or more important than this call? And then you need to think too, in priority wise, do you want to grow your business? If you don't and you just want to do this as a hobby and, fo and have fun with family and focus on family, that's totally fine. But that means then you can't get upset when other people are rank advancing or hitting financial milestones in their business if you're not going to prioritize that time. Maybe, I mean, there's just so many examples here, like so many things that I, I could have done today that were a little more urgent. So another thing I've been saying for weeks is I've got a bunch of shit on my back porch that needs to get put in the garage. Well, the garage is so full right now that I don't have room to put it in there. So then I'm saying, oh, well, I need to clean out my garage. Yeah. Then I also say, I need a shelving unit in my garage. So instead of like cleaning my garage today, I go to Family Dollar and look for a shelving unit. Did that really serve me? No. A, they didn't even have the shelving unit. But B, I got to clean the garage before I can even make, put the shelving unit up. But here I am focusing on that. Frank's counting how many times. Did, Christy, you missed it because you weren't on in the beginning. The name of the book is Get Your Shit Together. So that's why I keep saying shit. <laughs> Um, but is, what I really want you to take away from this call is think about your goals in a reverse engineering mindset. So think about the things that you no longer want to do. He said 14. <laughs> I did warn everybody at the beginning of the call that there would be some language. Yeah. Um, think about your goals. Think about what you want to accomplish and then start reverse engineering them. So yeah, I want to be an elite coach so that I no longer have to go to work for someone else. So what can I do? What, what can I get out of my life right now? You know, so that I can hit that goal. Something else, I can't remember if I got this from Josh Coates in my group or if I got it from this book that I read because this book really spoke to me. But of course, his group was really speaking to me too. One of the things was, Keep making goals, but stop limiting yourself to a timeline for them, which I like this to a degree because I think it is important to like take a goal and reverse engineer it and give yourself like a deadline like we do with Success Club. We say we want to hit Success Club 5 in the first two weeks of the month. We want to hit Success Club 10 in the next two weeks of the month. But the, th the problem is sometimes if we don't hit Success Club in those first two weeks, Sometimes we have this tendency of like giving up because we didn't hit it. So we're like, oh, well, didn't hit it. I guess I'll just, you know, sit back and aim for it next month. And it's like, but wait a minute. <laughs> just because you didn't hit it in that time frame doesn't mean you won't hit it. So for me, I really want to be an elite coach this year. I'm being very realistic when I say that it probably won't happen. Does that mean I'm going to just be like, well, I guess it was a waste of money to, to buy into this push to elite group. And I guess it's a waste of my time to keep putting forth all this effort. No, I am going just as hard and I'm doing all the things Josh Coates tells me to do because it, I may not hit it in 2019, but I'm setting myself up real good for 2020. And that's the mindset we need to have. We need to have this mindset of, I've got a goal. I want to accomplish it. 
I, I'm definitely further along now than I would have been without him. I am in such a better place now business-wise than I was before I signed up with Josh Coates. So, and I actually said this to one of the girls that's in the group with me. We, we um, check in every morning at 5 a.m. together and we check in every evening together at the end of the day. And I was just saying to her, like after my one-on-one -on -one call, I realized um, I'm, I'm probably won't be elite this year. I'm pretty far away from the goal. Now it doesn't mean I'm not, I'm going to stop pushing, but I, I've got a long way to go in order to get there. But I've come a long way from where I was in January, 2019 to where I am today, because I was in, I was struggling. Y'all know that I was honest and very transparent about it. And I'm not struggling anymore. I mean, I still have bad days, but I'm not struggling anymore the way I was. So it says here, not having your shit together, there's 15, is self-sabotage, pure and simple. You lost track of your keys, phone, and wallet? Great. You're locked out, blacked out, and tapped out. Do the same with your metaphorical shit, and you're likely to lose even more. Opportunities, friends, respect, and the game of life altogether. A lot of people allow fear to put them on the defensive. As a result, they lose sight of their goal and the path it takes to get there. Strategy flies out the window. The focus switches to everyone else instead of me, and the only commitment they can muster is in making excuses for their behavior instead of changing it. And I think we have so, such a problem with that. Like, I know when I start to feel defeated, like when I start to realize I'm not going to hit that goal this month, or I'm not going to hit that goal this year, I start to look at all the other people who have already hit it. And I think about why they hit it and I didn't hit it or what they've got going that I don't have going. Or I start to make excuses for myself like, well, yeah, she can do that. All she has is a husband at home. She doesn't have two kids. She doesn't have a full-time job. This is her full-time gig. Like I, I can easily get into that mindset. And we need to get out of it because honestly, the world's not out to get you. It's not. We're our biggest problem. You are out to get you. You're out to get yourself. Because if we, we sometimes look for a reason to give up on ourselves because it's a lot easier. It's so much easier to give up, give in, stop pushing, stop digging, push snooze. Am I stepping on any toes here? And it's not. You're scheming on a thing that's a mirage and I'm trying to tell you now it's self-sabotage. I think the Beastie Boys say that or something like it. But we're, we're, we do that. We self-sabotage and we need to stop. We need to be very aware and um, conscientious of the things that we are doing during our day. So for example, if you're someone who tends to sit on Facebook and scroll, time yourself. See how, like when you realize you've been scrolling, try to figure out how long you've been doing that. And think about all the people you could have invited in that time. Or if you're, I'm not someone who does that. I'm actually really bad about getting on Facebook and checking stuff. So I have to re set reminders on my phone to get into the team page. I have to set reminders on my phone to check my messages. I have to set reminders on my phone for the team call. But I do that because I know that's a weakness and I don't want to use it as an excuse. So I set myself up for success instead of failure. Um, if you're someone who, like for me at work, planning time can be really productive or it can be social hour. So I tend to make sure at least two days a week, my door isn't shut, but it's almost all the way shut. Sometimes I even have my light off. The other day the janitor walked in and I was like, I'm in here. I don't want to scare you. And she was like, ah, because <laughs> I did scare her, but I didn't want her to turn the light on and see me and freak out because I was in there working. But some, and sometimes after school, I do that. Sometimes after school, I'll close my door and I'll sit at my desk until four o'clock. I'll bring my laptop from home and I will work this business until four o'clock before I go get the kids because this is a priority to me. So you have to just be aware where, where are those pockets of time in my day that I throw time away? And maybe it's not throwing it away. Maybe you really do need to sit in the bathtub for 30 minutes and read your book today. You're not even your PD book, your fiction book. I did that today. I needed it. But then be aware of that. Give yourself that time and make up for it in other ways. And be aware of the ways that you are wasting time that you don't even realize. For example, scrolling on social media, watching other people's stories on Instagram. 
Are you really getting anything out of that? Are you really taking strategy away from that? Or do you find yourself saying, man, hers are so much better than mine. Or how come I don't talk that good when I'm live? Or, you know, all these things. Like, we all do it. I stopped following so many people this year because I was doing that. So set yourself up for success. I really, really, really want you tomorrow, tomorrow, to make a list of things that you do tomorrow that don't have to be done. And think like one, a, a couple of weeks ago, one of my girlfriends was like, hey, do you want to go get a drink after work? And I was like, you know what? I do. But there are so many other things that I need to get done. I'm going to have to say no. And I, I hated saying no. I really did. I really wanted to go hang out and be social. But I did. I had so many other things that had to get done. And I knew that they wouldn't get done if I did that. So we just have to be, sometimes we have to be an adult for ourselves. Sometimes we have to be like, put our big, big girl panties on and not do the thing we want to do, but to do the thing we need to do. So just think about that. And tomorrow when you go into the team page, I'm going to have a little uh, graphic. And I really want you to be able to share five to 10 things that you do tomorrow that you didn't have to do. It can be anything. I mean, it can be, I don't know, anything. <laughs> whatever you do that you don't have to do. So think about that as you're setting goals. I'm also going to ask for your goals for the last quarter. So be ready to share them. I hope you guys have a great week.